Hopefully, there are literally three times as many of you as there were a week ago. No pressure, no pressure at all. So, a very warm welcome. <laughs> Who are we kidding? It's more like a really loud ass, boisterous ass, obnoxious ass welcome to all of you all joining me on my journey here. My voice normally does not sound like this. <laughs> but I'm not really complaining. Before I start, I just want to say that um, I have a cold. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. This chick sounds good. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna hit you with another story time. One thing that I am not gonna be is dramatic, like crazy ass story time YouTubers. Like, that's not why I'm here. Basically, what I'm saying is that I am not the hijabi Tana Mojo. <laughs> But in the meantime, we've all been loving having a good laugh at my expense, which is like totally fine. I'm cool with it. I'm cool. Yeah, totally fine with it. So this story was actually, it was so inexplainable to me. I really want you to please in the comments, try to help me theorize, hypothesize how any of this was possible because it was so unexplainable to me that I literally pushed it out of my memory. It freaked me out so bad. I'm telling you, we went to a psychic, an Islamic sheikh. For this story, we're gonna take it back, take it back two years, rewind to 2014, 2015, like the winter of 2014 and 2015, right? Like that little December, January-ish like gap. This is when I had moved to Washington DC straight out of college, you know, like I had gotten a job at a civil rights organization, so I was on my grind. I was four or five hour drive away from my parents and it was just like, I'm on my own. And I had this badass roommate named Jaylan or Jay or JJ. My ride or die. We were basically renting an apartment in this like townhouse turned apartment building. If you live in Washington DC or ever been there, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The story begins. One weekend night when I was not home, Jay was in our apartment like by herself. She had just like just gotten home like really late at night. I had a cat at the time. Her name was Karma. Very deliberately named. So this night, my roommate gets home by herself. She enters our apartment and right off the bat, she notices that we had this like one light that had been out like in our apartment. Like it wasn't working or whatever. All of a sudden when she flicked the switch on, that one light flickered on which is like i guess you could explain it's like electricity or whatever but jay she's a very chill person not the type of girl to like overreact over anything she's very chill very smooth if anything she's like she has a very subdued reaction to most things and she told me that not only did it turn on but it was like flickering like spazzing on and off enough that it made jaylan freak out and you know when you just enter a space and you just feel like something is off you know, like you just feel that there's like something in the air. I don't know if it was just Jay being scared that she was by herself that night or like whatever, but she actually texted me that night. She was like, hey, are you coming home? Like, I don't know why, but I just feel really uneasy at home tonight. You know, like I just feel something weird, you know? Also, I'm not the type of person to like freak out about ghosts or something, you know what I mean? So that was one thing, right? Jay's weird feelings, then the lights flickering. Then on top of that, Karma was literally acting, in Jaylan's words, like she was possessed by a demon. Frantically running back and forth around the apartment, acting like she's like seeing something and like jumping up at things, running away. That's not, that's not too unusual of cats, right? But I guess like even her behavior was enough to put Jaylan off. So she texted me that night, she was like all scared or whatever. I was just like, Pfft. Jay, like, shake it off, you're a big girl, you'll be fine. I was a really negligent roommate, right? Instead of me being like, oh my god, are you okay? No, instead I was like, Jay, grow the F up. Do you need a nightlight or something? And mind you, this is the most mild part of this story. I'm just setting up the context over here, like the setting, you know? Now we are in the following weekend, right? I'm home, I'm back in DC, back at the apartment, and it's nighttime, right? We're all like asleep, we're all passed out or whatever. And Karma was sleeping in Jay's room. In the middle of the night, Karma starts playing with something, right next to Jaylan's head. She's taking something, she's like toying with it, enough to wake her up in the middle of the night. And my sleepy ass roommate basically just like grabs whatever Karma is playing with, throws it across the room so that Karma can GTFO and get away from her and she can go back to sleep. Doesn't think anything of it, right? Ominous. Next evening, I am in the living room doing my work or whatever. I hear Jaylan calling from the other room. Did you lose a bracelet or something? I'm just like, uh, I don't know. Like what, what does it look like? 
um karma was just playing with this and then she comes and brings it to me oh my god the most textbook creeper cringy classic looking beaded bracelet beads as in those like little old school square beads that have letters on them you know like you know in in grade school like you and your friends would make like little friendship bracelets looks like it was made by a child and there's like colorful beads on each side and then in the middle spelled out like some word like some really strange obscure your word had no idea what it was right so I was just like that's not mine does not look like anything any of our friends would wear or like carry on them or whatever like so then this is the moment that I make the fateful decision that I will never be able to come back from I went on Google and I typed in the word that was on the bracelet what do you think popped up hmm a language translation an old map for example Porn was not lucky enough to have it be any of these things. Instead, the search that it returned was an obituary. 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 <laughs> what? That obscure word on the beaded bracelet was the nickname and last name of a woman that had passed away one year ago from the weekend that Jaylan felt crazy-ish going on in our apartment. We screamed y'all so freaked out we were considering getting a hotel room and going somewhere for the night in fact i'm pretty sure that jay Lan went and spent the night at her friend's house so now that we've established that we are literally the unluckiest girls on earth that we live in a freaking haunted apartment and that i probably need to exorcise my cat like the freaking poltergeist i'm like okay there has to be some type of logical explanation for this, right? Cats get into the little nooks and crannies and like maybe someone that used to live here had a grandma and they had a beaded bracelet with her. But it was just really hard for me to explain. For example, right? If you want to have like a bracelet for a person that you love, that you care about or whatever, if it's like your grandma, for example, you'd probably put on there like grandma or like... I don't know, like some type of like nickname for them or whatever. Not their full freaking identifiable name. I think that's what freaked me out the most. It's like the bracelet wasn't intended to memorialize someone. It was intended for us to know the exact specific individual. And it had like a little nickname or something for that woman. Kind of have to be in the know with that person to know what the nickname is. And I did my research, AKA I creeped the F out of this name online. and. The obituaries were the only thing that I could find to her name and this woman died like way out in Florida or California or something basically like totally far away from DC so I just don't understand how this bracelet ended up there so how did my roommate and I decide to Olivia Pope this and handle the situation you ask we immediately lit up some incense to like freaking rid the apartment evil spirit flailing around with all this like incense smoke everywhere hoping that this will somehow be the evil spirit disinfectant that we need to purify our living situation so naive of us to think that that's all it was gonna take. Then we took the specific culprit in question, AKA the demon bracelet. And I had like a glass jar for some reason, you know, like we're Arabs. AKA we always find a different function for kitchen containers. And this jar's new life purpose was to contain the evil spirit that was this bead bracelet. I plopped that thing right in there. I screwed it on tight. I took our newly minted gin jar and I placed it right on top of our fireplace smack dab in the living room. I remember specifically telling Jay, we are keeping this right here in clear view so we always know where it is at all times. I don't want to hide it in a closet somewhere and then it'll always be in the back of my head like, what if this jar resurfaces somehow or is the jar still there in the back of the closet where we threw it? I wanted to make sure I knew where the beast was at all times. Such a bad idea. I come home from work one day and the gin jar has fallen off of the fireplace. <laughs> Laws of physics. What possible force? Nothing else on top of the fireplace was knocked off. We had candles up there. We had lights. We had like... No. It was just the gin jar. I literally wanted to throw up. I call up Jay immediately. I'm like, dude, do you recall the gin jar being on the floor? Um, no, it was on the fireplace. Since my mental capacity obviously just cannot handle this, I instead decide to write it off yet again. And I'm just like, no, it has to be the cat. It has to be. 
a gust of wind somehow. So I pick up the gin jar and I return it right back to where it belongs on top of the fireplace so I know exactly where it is. Lord help me, how do I say this? I come home the next day and it is on the floor again. Whoa. Oh, no, no. Yes, because the universe hates you, obviously. At this point, I am KO'd, game over, I am done. Doneer than Meek Mill in 2016. I tell Jaylan and we are through, we are over it. That night, we went to a psychic. <laughs> Psychic and Adams Morgan, what's good? Admo, you know what's up. And the psychic basically says something along the lines of, yes, there are spirits, but they're not gonna harm you. They're not like evil spirits. She looks at me and tells me that I'm a psychic, that I have some supernatural psychic abilities. We go to bed that night with just slightly a bit more relief. Like, okay, I guess they're not gonna try to possess us like they possessed karma. And we promptly take the jar and we go to the mosque with them. We actually requested a formal meeting with the head of the mosque, like the head imam, the Islamic sheikh, the scholar, to present to him this jar and to do something. I don't even know what we were expecting, him to sprinkle some holy Quran on us or something. We literally had a formal ass meeting, you guys. Like we walk into this room, it's a long conference table, He's sitting at the end of it. We're sitting on the other end of it. The Jin jar is right in the middle between us. The contained spirit, the captured Jin, like a freaking Pokeball, like right there. And we're just sitting around it, pondering it, trying to explain it. Basically, what this shake tells us is y'all need more Islam in your lives. Y'all need more God. Y'all need the Lord. He was like, calm down, go home, play some holy Quran recitations in the background, let it linger, everything will be okay. We're just scratching our heads like, Everything is gonna be okay. All we gotta do is play some Quran. Man, hell nah, what you talking about? We have a gin jar right now. So our meeting was promptly over and as Jaylan and I are leaving this mosque, we look at each other and we're like, hmm. He clearly isn't threatened by this jar in any way. So uh, why don't we just gift it to them? Right outside the doors of the mosque, in the lawn, we find this little plot of soil. We take the jar, we plop it in there, and we bury it in the front lawn of the mosque. Hey, okay, there's always Quran recitations playing at the mosque, right? Oh my God, you know a scary thought that I just had? I wonder if the jar is still buried there. So that was my crazy ass first apartment. Yeah happens like I said please in the comments below try to help me make sense of this I cannot wait to hear from all of you guys all my new friends and my new family thank you so much for the support and like being cool with me like all up in your grill like this you know like all up like whoa and being my loud ass self thank you also if there are other videos you want me to be doing please let me know in the comments below make sure to like comment and subscribe hashtag pro youtuber sure,